Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and it's official. Apple will be holding WWDC in June, kinda. Apple today released a press release that WWDC will indeed take place in June, but with a brand new online format due to the current health crisis. So this is definitely a first. WWDC is usually a huge event for Apple where they debut all of their new software and sometimes some new hardware. And now they are shifting that entirely into an online format. But at least the silver lining here is that WWDC is not canceled. We will definitely be getting new software and probably some new hardware announcements as well. So for this video, let's go over everything we might expect at WWDC this year, including software and hardware. First, let's go over what we can probably 100% expect to be at WWDC, and that is, of course, the software. We should be getting updates to iOS in the form of iOS 14, we will be getting watchOS 7, and we will be getting macOS 10.16. Obviously, they will call it something else when it's released, probably some California location like they've been doing with past macOS releases. As for the major changes in iOS 14, I actually did a dedicated video covering the changes to iOS 14 and watchOS 7, which I will leave a link up here, uh, but I will quickly go over some of the features we can expect. The first thing for iOS 14 is actually a brand new home screen. This is supposed to be using some sort of list view, and it should be an alternative to the current springboard. It's not completely replacing the home screen, but you should get a toggle for either this new list view or the old-fashioned springboard that you're used to. We're also expecting some other things like wallpaper bundles, the ability for third parties to maybe change Siri's voice, some HomeKit changes in the form of night shift for lights, updates to HomeKit secure video for face detection, and the ability for the HomePod to be used as a default speaker for your Apple TV. We are also expecting some accessibility changes in the form of haptic feedback when certain sounds are heard, as well as some audio accommodations for AirPods and earbuds users, as well as the possibility of hand gestures using the camera on your iPhone. We are also expecting some major updates to messages, including the ability to mention someone and the ability to retract messages as well. We are also expecting some radical changes to how iOS works with the ability to set third-party applications as the default application. So instead of Safari being your default web browser, you could switch it over to Google Chrome, or instead of Apple Music being your default music player, you can switch it over to another service like Spotify. Of course, we are also expecting iOS 14 to include some enhancements to augmented reality and a bunch of other small and minor tweaks as well. One of the current rumors for iOS 14 though is that this update will be focused on stability and bug fixes above all else, especially after the rocky launch of iOS 13. So a lot of these features that I'm saying in this video might not actually make it to iOS 14 if it is determined that it slows down performance in any way. Now we don't know too much about iPadOS quite yet, but there is a strong rumor that Apple will be releasing a new keyboard that has a trackpad on it and that Apple will be expanding trackpad support in iPadOS 14. So if Apple is doing that, I would expect to see the iPad Pro, and maybe the trackpad make an appearance at WWDC, and this would be a very interesting shift for the iPad if this rumor turns out to be true. Okay, but it's not all about iOS for WWDC. Apple, of course, has other software in the mix, including watchOS 7. WatchOS 7 is going to come with a couple new features, including the ability to share a specific watch face, a new infographic pro watch face, which will have a tachymeter built in, as well as the ability to use a grouped album for your photo's watch face. Apparently there's also a kids mode coming to the Apple Watch, so you could set up an Apple Watch for a kid without them having to own their own iPhone. Lastly, we are expecting some big health features either for Watch OS 7 or a brand new Apple Watch Series 6. The Apple Watch Series 6 obviously won't launch sometime until the fall, but Watch OS 7 could possibly include the ability 
for sleep tracking on even the current Apple Watches or the ability to detect blood oxygen levels. As of right now, we just don't know if that will require any new hardware or if you can run it on the current Apple Watch Series 4 and Apple Watch Series 5. For sleep tracking, I think that might make its way into all of the Apple Watches, but something like the blood oxygen levels might require new hardware. Of course, there is one more big software update we are expecting at WWDC, and that is macOS 10.16. However, there haven't been too many rumors regarding new features for macOS 10.16, but there is a pretty big possible transition coming up. Last year, we got macOS Catalina, which included a new Catalyst feature to help port over iPad apps on the Mac, and we have seen some iPad apps make their way over to the Mac. For example, I use the Twitter client daily, and that is based on iPad and iOS code. This year, we are getting a lot of rumors, especially from notable supply chain analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, that Apple will indeed be introducing an ARM-built Mac, that means they would be using their own A-series of processors, and Ming-Chi Kuo expects this Mac to be available at the end of 2020 or at the beginning of 2021. You're probably watching this video and going, Greg, WWDC takes place in June. Why would you be talking about a product we are expecting at the end of this year or the beginning of next year? And that is because if Apple is planning to transition the MacBook or any of their other Macs over to their own processors, they are going to have to let developers know in advance. So would I expect Apple to have an ARM MacBook ready to show off at WWDC? Probably not, but I would expect Apple to announce this transition if they are going to announce a new MacBook by the end of this year. Steve Jobs did something very similar when he transitioned away from the PowerPC architecture to the Intel chips that are currently inside of the Mac. He announced that transition without necessarily showing off any new Apple products. Apple could show off this transition and explain why they are doing it, and then they could let developers load this ARM version of macOS either on iPads or perhaps even Apple TV hardware, or maybe even give them some special developer hardware that they can use to be ready for this transition. Developers are going to have to make sure that their apps are ready and able to run on these A series of chips. They're going to need plenty of advanced warning. So again, if we are to believe Ming-Chi Kuo, if we are to believe that a R MacBook is coming out as soon as the end of this year, I would expect Apple to detail this transition at WWDC. Okay, that takes care of the software we should expect at WWDC, but what about the possibility of any hardware? Now again, with everything going on before I saw this press release, I might caution you to say that maybe there wouldn't be any hardware announced at WWDC. Certainly, there are lots of rumors about upcoming hardware from everything from new iPhones to new iPads to a new iMac, Mac Mini, and 14.1-inch MacBook Pro. And while I would urge caution on all those announcements, don't get your hopes up, I think there is a silver lining here which comes out of this Apple press release from Apple's own Craig Federighi. And that's because he said, with all of the new products and technologies we've been working on, WWDC 2020 is going to be big. So again, Craig Federighi says new technologies and new products. So I think we should expect some hardware announcements at WWDC. Now I did cover a lot of these products with their own dedicated videos. Again, if you wanna know a lot about these products, make sure you check out some of the videos on this channel, but I will give you a brief overview of what hardware products I would expect at WWDC 2020. Now again, just as a word of caution, I don't know if all of these products will be announced at WWDC due to the current crisis, they might be pushed back, or they might be released via press release before the WWDC announcement. Okay, hardware products we should expect are a new iMac and a new Mac Mini. This comes out of a tweet from CoinX. He has been pretty reliable with most of his tweets going back, and he says that we should be expecting a new iMac and Mac Mini soon. So if this isn't announced at WWDC, 
it might be even announced earlier via a press release. Now for these updates, I wouldn't expect anything major. We haven't heard any rumors about a iMac redesign or a Mac mini redesign. So I would expect these to pretty much be spec bumps, look for new processors, new graphics with the AMD series, maybe new graphics coming into the Mac mini. That would be really, really intriguing. I would expect that the iMac get the T2 chip and also transition completely to flash-based storage and finally get rid of the spinning hard drive. We also have a recent rumor from Ming-Chi Kuo saying that we should expect new MacBook Pros and a new MacBook Air during the June timeframe, and these will have the brand new Magic Keyboard that replaces the Butterfly Keyboard. Another rumored product is of course that new iPad Pro with a triple lens camera system and the new A13X chip and the possibility of this also including a mini LED display as well as a time of flight sensor on the back of the camera. So obviously we've heard some reporting that Apple is planning to actually release this iPad Pro either at the end of March or early April. But again, due to everything that's going on with the current crisis, we could see Apple push this back to an announcement at WWDC in June. Again, this iPad is mostly going to be a spec bump upgrade with that brand new camera. Of course, we also have some minor other updates. We are expecting a product red Apple Watch Series 5 to make a debut. So that could possibly again be at the March event. We are expecting brand new Apple headphones. This will be the first time Apple is making over the ear headphones. We actually saw an icon leaked in some iOS code. So expect maybe that either between now or again shown off at WWDC. Now, there were also two other unannounced products that we were expecting to be announced sometime soon at a possible March event. Obviously, due to WWDC being announced, that March event is pretty much canceled. Now, Apple may release this stuff via press release, but according to some of the sources I've seen, according to people like John Prosser, the iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2 that we were expecting at the end of March is probably delayed and it's probably delayed until October. That's because obviously with everything going on, Apple doesn't want to fill up the Apple stores with a ton of people and an iPhone launch, even if it is a budget iPhone, would fill up those Apple stores with a lot of demanding customers. Another product that we were expecting to launch alongside the iPhone 9 was Apple AirTags. Again, we are hearing that that is pushed all the way back to either a September or an October release, but that's not 100% certain either. Again, that's what I think we can expect for WWDC 2020. Again, this is going to be an online event with an online keynote. So expect this to all be available sometime in June. We actually don't have the exact date quite yet. Apple says they will be announcing even more details to follow. So maybe I'll come back and give an update video in the future. However, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also be sure to let me know in the comments below, what are you most excited to see at this year's WWDC? And how do you feel about Apple making this an online only event? As always, if you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. If you wanna connect more with me, make sure you follow me on Twitter. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.